Hey friend, Shane from HunterWrench.com, and before I jump into the accessories here, let me go hook this up to a motorcycle and show you why I'm so happy to have a jump pack with a voltmeter. Hey friend, smash that subscribe button, it really helps us out. Also, we have hundreds of videos and playlists. I'm gonna show you my new jump pack that I got that I expect to carry in my motorcycle. And it's also big enough though to start an eight liter you know, gas engine and a six liter diesel according to the specifications. But I want something, like I said, a little bit smaller, more compact. I'm gonna show you the cool storage case it comes in. I'm gonna be able to put some other accessories in. I'll show you that in a second. But I wanna talk about why I chose this jump start. And that is very specifically because it has a voltmeter gauge on that. So especially if you're on the road and you're trying to diagnose something, the ability to know like where your battery's at is a, it's just a great feature. This is very traditional to a lot of the jump packs today. It has, uh, let me turn this on here. I gotta hold it. It has a flashlight, so that's gonna be really nice and handy. Pretty dang bright. Okay, I'll try and step off in the dark over here. You can see what's going on. It's lighting up pretty good. Flash, strobe, and off. Okay, so you can get an idea. Yeah, super, super bright LEDs on that. Okay, but what else? The other thing is it has USB C and standard USB. And what's interesting is the USB-C is in or out, so it'll go bi-directional there, and then this is just out. And it's, I think, the 3.1 amp. I'll look it up on the specs there, but that's exciting as well. And then the cables obviously detach. I just have them plugged in right now. And then another feature it has is the boost mode. So if you take and hold this for five seconds, it'll put it in a booster mode, but you don't have to. You can just simply turn it on, Let's try and set this up here. I'll see if I can do it one-handed. So the simulation I wanted to duplicate here was that you accidentally left the key on. So let's see if I can get this to shut off. Okay, so you're gonna grab your pack. It says to plug your cables in, okay, per the directions. So let's do that. And I wanna, like I said, show you what the big advantage here is. Okay, if I've drained my battery down from leaving this light on, I come on here and I'm like, dang. So I've walked away a few hours. Yes, I intentionally left the key on. So let's go ahead and just turn that off. Pretend I didn't, okay? It says, hook it up. Then it says, turn it on. You're gonna see a countdown here. And there's a couple different things. It's gonna give you some air codes. It's gonna check the polarity and then it's gonna tell you that you're ready to jump. But this is what I love. Look it, it tells me my battery at, is at 11.6. Why is that so great? Well, why that's so great is that's a, a really good reason I need a jump pack then. If my battery read 12.6 or 12.8 right now, I'd be like going, hey, why isn't my bike starting? In our example, we saw we left the key on, but what if you didn't have that? What if you simply just don't know why your motorcycle's starting? To be able to see what the battery voltage is without having to grab a multimeter. You're stranded on the road. You don't know what you got going on. That's a big advantage to have one of these jump packs with that battery indicator on there. So let me go ahead and start this. I'm gonna show you actually a couple more benefits of having a voltmeter gauge. Let's go ahead and try and start this motorcycle, see what happens. Okay. Watch this. Turn it off. I'm going to hook it back up. That, my friends, is why it's so great to have the gauge because what's happening now is it's telling me my alternator's working. So I just use that tool as a voltage meter to see if the battery is actually getting a charge from the charging system because that meter is reading what's at the battery right now. It's not reading the battery in the tool. 
Let me explain that a little better. All right, this is pretty stinking cool here and thinking about how you can use this tool even a little bit outside of what it was designed for. It's designed for jump starting a vehicle and it's designed for charging accessories. Like we could charge flashlights, phones, and anything out of that battery bank. But here's what I'm saying so cool about that multimeter. If you know what battery numbers mean, that's gonna be a big advantage to you. So right now it's just memorizing what that battery was being charged to, okay? And actually, that number may seem low to some of you. We're at 13.2 here. That may seem low and you're thinking, well, geez, don't you charge at like 14, 14 and a half, 15? Yes, you do. But you gotta remember, we're starting with a battery that was already 11. So the charging system is only capable of putting usually a couple volts above whatever it was at as that battery charges okay so it goes from 11 actually gets up into that 12 6 12 8 then it'll get into that 14 14 5 somewhere in that range but what this is telling me right now knowing what those numbers mean it tells me my charging system's working let me disconnect the cable and rehook it up and see what that surface voltage is real quick from just that little one minute of running So check that out pretty cool so that's where it's sitting right now okay we were at 11 5 it ran for one minute and it's showing 12 4 well that's just surface voltage that's like pouring into the jug and it's stirring around the top it hasn't settled when you have a maintenance free battery you need to understand that a maintenance free battery fully 100 charge is 12.8 volts 12.6 is only 75 percent charge 12.4 that is actually only 50 percent charge that means i need to get my butt home get this on a charger to get that back to a full state of charge 12.4 a lot of people say oh i got 12 volts i'm good well let's keep using our scenario there 12.4 is 50 12.2 would be 25 and technically a 12 volt battery at 12 volts is dead even though it might turn on a light really dim so you want to know what those numbers mean now, just for you old school folks have a wet battery, 12.6 is 100%, 12.4 is 75, 12.2 would be uh, 50, and uh, so on and so on, right? So I just kind of wanted to use that math for you. If I try to start this motorcycle right now with just that little bit in there, if I take this jump off, it may not even start the bike. It may need a little bit more than that. might not have ran long enough, and I may still be in trouble. I hope that makes sense, but... Like I said, the value you have in these jump packs with a meter is you start to be able to test some stuff and not need a multimeter. We could see what the battery's at. We could disconnect it and then see what it's at after we jumped it. We can see by disconnecting it while it's running, reconnecting it, we could see what the charging system is outputting because that's taking live voltage from the moment you hook it up. It's probably averaging it to some extent but it is pretty stinking cool to be able to have that. Do you see how much that LED indicator is draining down? That's because it's just sitting there running through and it thinks, hey, I, you need me to jump, you need me to jump. Per the specifications, it says you can charge this and let it sit for 24 months. It says it'll start 25 times off that one charge. So pretty cool stuff. Let's do the reverse polarity and show you what it looks like on the screen. Reverse polarity.
All right, my friends, well-packaged box, if you will, comes with obviously the clips to hook up to your battery. I've talked about some of the functions on this, but I'll just go over them a little bit more. You saw the headlights, you saw the outlet for the cables. You can't mess it up. It only fits in one way. If you try to put it in the wrong way, it won't fit. Just in our case here, the positive was on top, if you get the same model. And then on the USBs we talked about, USB-C and A, both of these actually will be outputs, which I think is pretty cool. A lot of times we have the USB-C in anymore, and then only the A out, but this is either or. So this is only to charge, but it will charge other devices if you have a C device. So I thought that was really cool. And these are, I believe, let me look here. I believe it's the 3.1 amp. Yeah, it is the uh, 3 amp, and I believe uh, on Amazon it actually says 3.1, and that's either or. So that's going to be a fast charging device on that. It does come with a charge cable, an instruction manual, and a customer experience card is what they call it. So, but as far as the manual, let's talk about that. Is it worth a, worth a dang? It's actually pretty nice. I noticed here that it's very well wrote, tells you what everything is. Your LED state of charge, 80 to 100 on the top one, 60 to 80. 40 to 60, 20 to 40, and uh, 0 to 20 in these reds if it's flashing. Uh, flashing at 0%, only one red LED flashing and no voltage display, you're done. It's not going to do you any good, okay? So the other thing that I noticed on here as far as the you know operations of this, like I said, if you just want to take advantage of a jump, maybe you have a battery that just needs a little bit of a a kick to it to get you going. You're gonna hook up these to the battery, then turn it on, and then attempt to start the vehicle, that's it. But if you really need that extra, you can hold the mode button here for five seconds, and that'll put it in boost mode to give you all the, all the extra. Now, one thing you may decide to do is you could purchase just this, okay, and store it how you wish, or they make a pretty heavy duty case. So this is the option we went with because it's gonna allow us to store the accessories in here. We're gonna store the manuals. We don't need the customer experience, but just in case we have a friend using this or let somebody borrow the car and they wouldn't know how to use it, the manual will be in there for them. But one thing I like about this case is there was actually some room in here. So I've got a few other tools I like putting in here. Sometimes I'll have a roll of electrical tape. I have my favorite, you know, Harbor Freight <laughs> screwdriver that I just love to put in here. Let me grab that and show you. This case is really big enough that I can throw a pair of side cutters in there, crescent wrench, and even I love this Harbor Freight screwdriver because it has a small uh, straight and Phillips, and then it has a larger straight and Phillips. This is probably one of the most versatile screwdrivers that I just have around the house. I love the dang thing. But we can fit all of this in here, like I said, and even maybe a little uh, crescent wrench or something. And that'd be a decent little, you know, toolkit to take with you down the road. Tell you what, throw some electrical tape in there. Not too shabby. And I've got some stuff to take with me. So however you're going to do it, good to know. But we want to thank Pocketor for jumping on with the new Tools to Wrench channel. We're excited to put this into some long-term review. It's got some pretty hefty specifications on there saying that it can sit for 24 months and have 25 starts to it. So that I'd say is a big deal. One thing I've noticed in my testing, if I just let it sit there while I'm yakking away in the video, it seems to drain down pretty quick. So I think it's one of those things that hook it on there, use it and get it off when you're done with it. Don't let it just sit on there clicking through. There's a little pro tip for you. All right, my friends, make sure and like, share, and subscribe. If you haven't done so yet, head on over to the new YouTube channel, Tools to Wrench. And as always, make it a great day and keep wrenching.